Hello and welcome to the searching in the library catalog tutorial video. So what we're going to do is we're going to get started and we do that by opening up our internet browser. Doesn't matter which one you use, whatever you feel the most comfortable with. And now you have a couple different options. So one option is if you want to you type in just the web address itself. So you could do library.edu. Remember that Clark has an E at the end. Um, and you can navigate to the library's website through here. This can kind of be a really like direct way to go, especially if you're already like logged in and you just kind of want to get started. The other method is if you go through your MyClark and you'll notice your MyClark's a little different. So you're gonna have all these different cards that are kind of listed here. And the card that you're looking for is one that is referred to as academic resources. So you're gonna go to the academic resources one and you're gonna look for where it says library. Either option that you take is going to get you to the library catalog. So from here you've landed on kind of the working library website and what you're going to do is you're going to scroll down until you see where it says library catalog and there is a search box there. So what you could do is you could start here and you could just plug in your topic um, or the particular author that you're looking for or even the specific book that you're looking for. So the library catalog is really good for when you are maybe starting a topic, starting research, you're really interested in looking at either print books or maybe even ebooks. Though that is not the only thing that you can find in the library catalog, you'll also find DVDs. So if you wanna watch movies, you can do that as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug in something. So let's say that I'm looking for books that are related to Shakespeare. So what I could do is I could just plug Shakespeare into this box here, let it do its search, and we'll see what kinds of things it comes up with. Don't worry if it takes just a little bit of time. Okay, so we can already see that there's a lot of different things that we might look at, um, but the one thing to note is that anytime you're searching in the library catalog, what you're going to see is that ours defaults to libraries worldwide, which means exactly what it reads as. It's gonna search all of the libraries. And while that is a really cool function, it is not very helpful when you are looking for things that are here, either in print at Clark that you might come to the library and check out and use, or even things that you might access completely online. What I wanna do first is I'm gonna go over to the left side of my screen, and I'm gonna look for where it says held by library. Um, and you'll notice that right now the, the box is checked for libraries worldwide. We're gonna change that. So we're gonna change that to Clark University Library, which is that third option in the list. We're gonna click on that. It's going to update our results automatically. So now everything that shows up in this list is going to be things that I can either access completely online, so maybe like an ebook or maybe even like a journal that would have journal articles in it, um, which is this first one. Um, ebook kind of being like the second one here, the complete works of William Shakespeare. Um, if I were to um, be interested in that one and I wanted to take a look at it, all I would need to do is click this blue button that says view ebook. And what that's going to do is it's going to take me to wherever that ebook um, like lives in. So in this case, it took me to EBSCO ebooks. And from here, what I can do is I can look at um, details about the particular book, um, if that might interest me, um, things like when it was published. Um, you might even look at things like the publisher permissions. So um, knowing that I can print email um, or even save like 60 pages might be helpful to me. Knowing whether or not that I can copy and paste could be helpful to me and knowing how many users can access it. So essentially, uh, because this one is listed as unlimited, it means that if I'm accessing it, um, then anybody else could be accessing it as well. So um, especially if you're in a class with lots of other students, uh, you want to make sure that you can kind of get into the things that you um, need to. 
So from here what I could do is I could either scroll down and I could look at the table of contents, um, which just allows me to be able to go through. I can click through to any part. So let's say that I'm really only interested in like Macbeth. I can skip ahead and I can click on the things related to Macbeth. Um, I can also go over here on the left side and I can click PDF full text and I can take a look at um, all the things that are kind of um, within this text. So it's going to open essentially like an ebook viewer um, that allows me to go through and I can also click through if I want. I can um, kind of skim things as I would like to, anything like that. The other option that I'm just going to point out um, very briefly is the permalink option. So up here at the top where you see um, just like a whole host of things um, like print pages, site, um, permalink. The permalink literally is a web address that is dedicated specifically to like this material. So in the case of this book, if I... Um, we're wanting to look at this book. Um, maybe I don't have a whole lot of time right now, um, but I want to be able to refer back to it later. What I could do is I would click where it says permalink, and it's going to give me a link to use. So if you go this route, make sure you're using this link and not the web address at the top. Um, using the permalink will always guarantee that you will end up back at the specific material that you are looking at. I might also use the site option as well. So um, if I were to need to cite this, I could go through and look for my specific citation style needed, and it would be um, a huge benefit to cutting down the time um, maybe to figure out the citation on my own. So that's kind of just like some real basics in looking at those ebooks. So I'm actually going to close out of this. Okay, so I actually didn't have to scroll that far to find an example of one of our print books. Um, sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. It really can depend. But um, what you can do is if if in the case that you were only interested in ebooks or you were only interested in print books, over here on the left side, you can actually narrow it down to just one of those um, if that happens to uh, be helpful to you. So what you could do is where it says book, you would click on ebook. If you were interested in only ebooks, you could click on print book if you were only interested in print book. It is sometimes helpful just to have access to all the things at the same time. So scrolling back down, anytime that you see ones that list themselves specifically as print book, um, this is kind of what they're going to look like. So they're going to have this collection of numbers and letters. That is the call number. This is essentially how you would find the book. So we can see that it lists it as PR and then gives you some numbers. Um, so essentially what would happen is if you were interested in this book, this print book, what you would do is you would come to the library and um, either you can or if you'd like us to assist you in, in doing this, um, we would look for this book based on that. So we would utilize that PR 2976 period B75 and essentially play kind of like a matching game um, in order to find this on the shelf so that you can utilize it. Um, the other thing here also to note is that even for the print books that come up here, you're going to see options for citing um, up there kind of in the corner. You're also going to see options for sharing, which is going to be um, essentially kind of the permalink option. So you could click on the site and then it's going to give you that link to use. Um, and you can even email yourself um, this information as well from this same screen. Kind of the last thing is that um, you can, if you want, um, utilize the sign-in option that's at the top. All that does is it kind of just keeps track of essentially your account, so it's going to show you the things that you have checked out. If you need to utilize like interlibrary loan, you would be able to see some of that also from there. You wouldn't have to um, be logged in to do a, an interlibrary loan request. Um, this is just another option if you want to kind of just have access to your account that you have. Otherwise, you can um, be in touch with us and we can also give you the same information as well. Like I said, this is just some super basics on getting started searching in the library catalog. If you have additional questions or you need uh, further assistance, please don't hesitate to reach out to us.